Here we go. Okay. Welcome back to the stream. Um, we're going to continue working on the weapons today. So, um, yeah, we're going to start working on some new weapon types. But for starter, uh, let's see. Let's see where we are with the game. Well, that's not fun. <laughs> we started the game and we already have an error. Um, Might be because I have a game save. Um, and I don't know how to clear it. Okay. And because I don't know how to clear it, I should have made that. Hmm. No, for now we're gonna keep it like this. So let's go. Let's try to clear the the game save. So 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 last time we we made it so that we can or the or the save file saved to on on the disk instead of in uh, in, in registry um, using player prefs. So yeah, now we have to search for the file on disk. But fortunately, I know where to find it. So, what's this game? Why can't I see? Uh, why can't I see the game here? Now this is weird. Oh, because it's in default company. Because I forgot to change the company, right? Pretty sure that's the case. Yep, Project Tower. There we go. Yep. So we're here. So here's the save. I'm gonna delete it. Should work fine now. Yeah, no error. I don't know. Something weird in that save file. Doesn't matter. We're going to look at that later. But for now, we have this. So this is how the game looks right now. You can uh, go to the... You can look around the tower. You have the paths that the, the, that the enemies can, can take. You have health. You have coins for building weapons. And I wonder why do I have uh, zero coins? I should have some coins. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, unfortunately we don't have a way of uh, automatically starting a level, so we have to do that manually. I should make this automatic at some point because I'm starting to get annoyed by to, to always do this. But here we go, we have enemies. Unfortunately, we don't have a... a, a... Oh, yeah, okay, so the, the coins were not updated for some reason. Um, we don't have a, a tower module uh, with, uh, with a weapon slot, so we can build weapons right now, but um, yeah. Yeah, so you have this, you can look around the tower, you have the enemies, and whenever the enemies, enemies reach the top, um, you take damage. Right now, even though you're gonna reach zero health, you're, the game is still gonna keep going. We don't do anything uh, when, uh, when, the, when, the, uh, when the health reaches zero. But uh, that will come later. Yeah, as you can see, we have zero health, but no, but nothing happened. Yeah, that's not a problem. Um, okay. So let's see. Um, yeah, so this is the state of the game right now. It looks uh, kind of bare bone, but there there are a lot of systems in play for for doing uh, for doing stuff. So. Uh, for example, the enemies, we only have one type of enemy, you, you can call it, but uh, but it's very, uh, where is it? Enemy definition, you have a way of uh, defining the enemy, you have stats for it, you can define multipliers for the stats based on the, on the wave and the level it's playing. There are a lot of things uh, happening behind the scenes, even though it looks so simple in, in the game right now. Okay. Uh, uh, actually, let's see. Let's let's show. Uh, 
yeah so we have a uh, one uh, um weapon slot here so so this is currently we have we don't have graphics for the weapon but this is considered weapon this is the area in which the weapon the weapon uh, um fires or detects the enemies and this uh, the, the 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 weapon that we kind of have implemented is a laser so actually that was a bit uh, fast so i don't know if you've seen it but let's do it like so whenever the enemy enters there's a there's a laser there that shoots the enemy nothing fancy for now but uh, but it works so it just shoots the enemy, it takes damage, but right now it has an, uh, an insane amount of uh, damage that uh, this weapon, so it kills the the enemies always. Yeah, so so this is the, the, the first type that we've implemented and we're gonna do uh, two more uh, weapon types. Type. So let's see. Okay, so first we're gonna work on a projectile attack. So we're gonna need this for, um, I think, two weapons that we're planning. Um, one is a crossbow and another one is a spear. We're not sure if we're gonna do the spear, but uh, if we wanna do it sometime, uh, we will be able to. The, the crossbow is just basically shooting arrows and the spear is, as the name implies, it shoots spears. And the difference would be that uh, the spear one would be slower, but it has a chance of uh, uh, knocking an enemy off the tower. Without, it, it doesn't have to kill him, just knocks him out of the tower because it has so much impact, uh, impact force. And the other one is uh, EOA attack. So we have um, two attacks that would use this, or, or more like two weapons. Uh, one is uh, a flamethrower. So we, we would like to, yeah, to, yeah. Yeah, basically it's a flamethrower. We'll have the flamethrower. And the other one is not necessarily an attack you know an attack but it's more like a um uh let me see let's find that so this is the pump um it, ba it basically shoots some um, some liquid onto the tower and it slows the enemies down when, when they uh, walk through that liquid or that that's what what it's gonna look like um uh, but basically what's gonna happen it, the the weapon is gonna whenever you're near the weapon um you're gonna be slowed down by it okay but yeah so those are those are the two types that we're gonna work on today and there are a couple of things that we're gonna also do later on. Uh, so one is right now we we only have one way of targeting the the, the enemies, which is uh, the weapon is gonna target the closest one. But we wanna do um, more. Yeah, we're gonna want to have more traces on this. And uh, for example, target the strongest uh, enemy or the one with the with the lowest health. Um, yeah, this is one task. There's another one. Um, yeah, this is something that I forgot to add. So we, so the upgrade definition. So let's go to, to an upgrade, which would be in here. So this is an upgrade, what I call an upgrade definition. Uh, and what this does is for this statistic, which is in this example, the tower health, you can define uh, upgrades for it and what's the multiplier for each level and uh, and it has a cost um, how much does it cost to to get this level and one that i haven't done here 
because I've done this uh, this upgrade definition before I, I've implemented the economy in the game, uh, there's no reference to to what currency it should be used because we're gonna have two types of currencies in the game. We're gonna ha we're gonna have the the coins which are gonna use during a yeah while playing a level and um, yeah you're gonna use it for upgrading the towers or actually creating the towers and you're gonna get that currency from uh, from enemies when you kill and there's another type of currency which we call upgrade coins um and you're gonna get those uh, those special coins when you finish a level so and uh, you're gonna use them obviously for for upgrading uh, from upgrading uh, different things uh, like you have passive multipliers on on different on different stuff that's gonna be that you're gonna keep uh, throughout the game. Um, yeah, so even even though we know what type of currency we want to use here, I think it would be better to have it uh, specified because I have to use it in the code. Uh, uh, because that's how how the economy system works. I need to know a reference to to the type of currency that I'm gonna use to do um, yeah add different currency or subtract in this case. So yeah. And there was another task, which is this one: regenerate plot when the module is spawned. Yeah. So. Uh, last time, or I think maybe two streams ago, we've made this. Uh, uh, let's go to this. Where is this straight? This straight module. This weapon slot. And what the weapon slot does, you whenever you're in the game, click on it, and you're gonna spawn a weapon. Okay, good. One problem that we have is we have a system that tracks all the weapon slots and knows if they've if they've been active or not so we, whenever we respawn the tower when you load the game for example we know which weapon slots to show you and which to hide so that that works fine but one problem that we have is we have this id which identifies a specific weapon slot and i'd like to have this id be different whenever you spawn a module so right now it's the 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 ID is saved in the weapon slot component and it's never changing. Even if you have two modules of the same type in the tower, you're gonna have uh, the the two weapon slots that are, that are gonna appear. They're gonna have the the same ID. This doesn't change. So I'd like to have a uh, way when you spawn a module to reset the, uh, this ID, and we're gonna do it in a in a generic way somehow. But uh, yeah, that's the that's the uh, that's gonna be the outcome. So you spawn the module, the ID gets reset, and actually only when the the, the the tower is built the first time you're gonna we're gonna reset the ID, not when we load the game. So we have to take that into consideration because we don't wanna always update the ID. Otherwise we wouldn't uh, um, have matching IDs with with uh, what's on the or in the save file. Yeah. Okay, but uh, but yeah, this is gonna come later, and we're probably gonna work on on, on other stuff uh, after this, cause uh, yeah, this, this is not gonna take uh, a long time to do. But I don't know. I haven't done any planning, so I don't know what I'm gonna work on after this. We're gonna have to see. Um, maybe a way of uh, selecting, and that's probably yeah, that what that what we should do. A way of selecting which weapon to to create when you click a weapon slot or something. I don't know. Anyway, there are, there are a lot of things to do to do in here, uh, but I haven't actually thought about them. But uh, yeah, we're gonna do some planning after after I finish this uh, or those uh, five tasks. But first, we're gonna start with the projectile attack. So let's track the time. And let's start working on this. Let me get OBS back on here. Okay. 
Good. So let's see. Let's see what we've done uh, last time. So we should have a yeah. So here's the weapon slot. We have an attacks folder and we have the laser. Let's see what the laser does. We have something that we've done um, a couple. I don't know, maybe two streams ago. Don't remember when. We have the enemy detector, which is. Uh, um, Let's get the one in here. Is yeah, is this area, this circle area, that um, basically defines uh, the region in which uh, the enemy is going to be detected. So we use this enemy detector to get the, in this case, the closest enemy. And if we get any, if we have a, an enemy, uh, we're going to do some things on it. In this case, we're going to get the health component and then we're going to call the take damage uh, method and we have some some gizmos here that's the for now this is the laser that uh, that I've made but yeah so what we're going to do is make uh, another type of attack uh, and it's going to be called projectile Make a runtime folder. Projectile attack. Okay. Like so. Uh, we're gonna need to, uh, a. Actually, let's see. ESS weapons attacks laser runtime. ESS weapons attacks projectile runtime. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fine. We have to create a reference to the assembly first. Can I can I select the 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 file showing Unity? That's nice. That's actually good. Okay, so we have to create a assembly reference definition. So that this uh, in the runtime assembly. So now we should get some. Yeah, there we go. So it's included in the project tower runtime assembly. And now we can do our stuff, which is this going to be an entity component? For now, it's going to be a simple one. Uh, we're not going to do anything in the load phase. I don't think so. So, complete load right away. And let's make that data. What have we done with the, with the data here? So we have damage. And yeah, the, the reference to the enemy detector. Um, one second. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, yeah, sure, let's listen to this. Okay. Yeah, so we're gonna have a, sim uh, a similar thing uh, for the projectile attack. Now we're not gonna save anything. So this is it. Let's import everything. So we have damage. Uh, it's not going to be HP per second, it's going to be just HP because this is going to be the damage that we're going to apply to the projectile when we spawn it. And let's use this uh, or the data um, or the component right here. And one other thing, we're, we're going to need a fire rate for this. Shots per second. Okay. Let's make this uh, new weapon. Let's have weapons. Let's make a. Let's make a folder for for all of those. So. Uh, 
Let's make weapon slot. Put everything related to the weapon slot in there. Selected weapon service. No, that we don't care about that. Uh, another folder, please. Okay, let's make a. We're gonna keep the dummy weapon for now. Uh, I'm I'm probably gonna transform it into the into the laser. Um, yeah, or the crystal weapon. But for now, we're gonna call it dummy, and then we're gonna have a. Let's just call. Let's just call them dummy for now. Dummy projectile weapon. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm not gonna reuse this. I'm gonna let's make a new one here. So, dummy projectile weapon. Oh, and actually, I, I've seen something. So uh, we've actually made a, uh, a way of selecting or knowing which is the selected weapon, but we haven't added any buttons in the game. So, so we actually have this. So we don't have to make it. We just have to add some buttons in the in the UI. So that's nice. Okay, let's create this entity. So we need a an entity root. We need a lock. Uh, we need this uh, projectile attack data. Which I don't like this. Let's uh, put them inside. Like so. Yeah, that looks better. Okay. What else? What else? Let's make a components game object and let's add importer. Edit importer and um. projectile attack like so okay oh and let's not forget about the enemy not the enemy detector but the data i want um move component data let's put it above the projectile attack please yep uh let's set it up so enemy Radius, we don't have radius. Let's put it on one for now. Yeah, I don't know the collider. Uh, I'm gonna add it right now. Create empty enemy detector. Okay. And yeah, I get can I actually have how have we done it on uh, on the dummy weapon? Do we have the so enemy detector and if you have the capsule right on here. So capsule collider and um collider visualizer. That's it. This is the collider. Uh let's assign the global tower data. Let's delete this. And in here we need to assign the collider like so. And now we can control the radius of the of the collider. Let's put it on five. It's kind of huge, but whatever, it doesn't matter right now. We need to assign the enemy detector in here. Damage ten damage or no two point five damage and fire rate. We're gonna have four shots per second. Let's see. Save. And here's our weapon. Um, I mean, it's not done yet, but we have the prefab. Let's add some more things to it. So let's add a definition file. Weapons, weapon definition.
Let me projectile weapon definition. Let's add the prefab. We don't have a name. We're gonna have a cost uh, of I don't know five. Let's say we're gonna use the coins currency, and we don't care about the levels right now. I don't think we need to have those defined. I mean, we we can't upgrade them, so doesn't really matter. Okay, now, now let's actually make, no, uh, we need one other thing here. Uh, we're not gonna need this. We're gonna need a, an object. Uh, project pool. Like so. Uh, let's put a space in here. Okay. And we're gonna have to make some projectiles, I guess. So let's make that. Projectile. Dummy projectile. Um, let's add a cube to this. And let's see, let's make it uh, on X. Yep, that looks perfect. Make a material for this. Project a material. Okay. I mean. Yeah, doesn't matter. Let's make it blue. Sure. Uh, so we have the demi the, the projectile. We have a collider for this. Let's add it here. Let's an object pool. Dummy projectile. Project. Oh, that's right. This is the pool. Let's add it, um, chunk size. Let's say we're gonna have 20 bullets, uh, one pre worm chunk. That's okay. Yeah, that should be fine. Let's see if it's in here. Yep, dummy projectile pool. We have it. okay. Yeah, so the thing that's left uh, is to assign. Um, the weapon and let's assign the object pool here like so and hmm. let's go back to the selected weapon service and let's change the default to the projectile one yep we're gonna add some buttons later but for now um, we're gonna have it like, like this uh, but let's not forget, we haven't actually implemented the, the weapon yet. We only have the for it. Okay, so uh, actually we're gonna do an... I on update. Implement this and let's see. Private timer, uh, my timer. And actually, in the load phase, we're gonna do this. We're gonna create a timer. 
new timer uh, one over uh, d dot fire rate. And let's create the in here. And for now, uh, let's just something. Shoot. Okay, and in on update, we're gonna update this with time dot delta time. Nope, that's not what I wanted. I want this to be an expression body, like so. Good. We have a timer. Uh, it should be updated on update. And one one thing that I forgot to add to the weapon is a let's unlock this uh, entity update manager. Entity update manager. So this is the the component that drives the updates on the entity components. So we definitely need one of those. Okay. So now we can play. And let's see. So we got. And here we go. We have. The shooting is happening. I mean, it should happen. Uh, only when we have enemies in in range, but uh, but yeah, for now it's good. So we can do it like so. D dot enemy. That actually we can copy that to the other one. We want to do this or something along the lines of this. Try to get enemy. If you don't, just return. Get the closest enemy. Get its health. And actually, we don't that we don't want that. Okay, let's try it again. So it's not shooting right now, and let's try to start a level. And it didn't do shit. What? Did it pass? No, it's impossible to pass too, too fast through this. So what happened? Uh, let's see. Uh, um, let me put the weapon. Let's, let's debug this. Um, there are no enemies in range because why is he not seeing the the end? Hmm. Do I have to have a I don't have a layer for this. So why am I not seeing the, the enemies? Because this is not a trigger, right? Um, that was a problem and we can see this now. Yeah, I actually made it a collider. Um, or not made it a collider, but uh, forgot to to make it a trigger. Uh, and close this. Save. Back. Come on. You know what? Let's add uh, at least one web slot on on each uh, on each mod because this is getting annoying. So um, weapon slot.
didn't I have or shouldn't I have a wait? How did I do it on the on the street module? Oh I've added a tower line component. Okay, this should be added to the Yeah for sure. We have to have it on the weapon slot itself. So let's add it. Uh tower line component global tower data that I can assign the others I can't now I can remove this let's see yep now I can change this put it back on zero save and now if I go into another module let's say split Now I can add weapons slots. Yes, awesome. So let's, I don't know, put it here. Save another module. Um, parallel. We're going to add two weapons in this. One and two. So this is going to be empty. And it's gonna be let's put it in the middle. This is gonna be minus ninety and also on high ten. So we have two weapon slots here. Save. Another module. Helix. Uh it's gonna be actually no, no where to put it. So two weapon slots. This is the root, also a height of 10, and the difference is this has to be rotated by 1, so it's in the on the back, nice. What else is there? Combine, also an easy one. A height, let's say 15, uh, 15 like so. Save and I think there's only one, no, two more mods 180. This one is simple. Ninety and ten and one eighty reverse. Where is it? Here. Uh minus ninety? And then save. Okay, so now we have weapon slots on all all modules, so we don't have to hunt for that uh, street piece. There we go. We have we have the weapon. Let's start the level, and it's shooting. And it stopped after a while. Nice. Now let's add those projectiles and make them actually damage the enemies. And I wonder how. Hmm. How should I make them behave? I'm gonna get a projectile. Um, it's gonna be active. Let's say no. Actually, it can. It doesn't matter. Let's uh, create the projectile script. A projectile. Yeah. Okay, it's gonna be a simple mono behavior, or should it be a mono behavior? Hmm. Actually, no. It's gonna be a life cycle component. Phase, uh, we're gonna do nothing in the load phase. Um, 
actually no i don't want it to be a life cycle component but i don't want it I want it to be a loadable because i don't want to load it there's nothing to load in here fine it'll be a simple mono behavior and i'm, I'm gonna hook onto the life cycle myself so i'm gonna need a reference to the life cycle service I feel like this method should be put in a um, no, it can't be put in a generic place or can it? I mean it can if we return the yeah let's do that let's go to the lifecycle service let's try to copy this let's stick it up here private static um, ref um, we don't have a this no actually we're gonna just return it I think do I want to do this this uh, set dirty in here uh, let's just do it like this that damn it is Kind of hard to do actually. Fine. Not engine uh, editor. Okay. Actually, I don't need the reference here. I do. I do need the reference here, though. Okay. So now instead of having this, I mean, I can still have this, but I can do lifecycle service dot by, it's private, right? Yeah, public, public. find lifecycle service, this, uh, this, and ref lifecycle service, like so, and let's, Go to expression body, and now we can copy this to the projectile as well. Okay. We don't need any space, I don't think so. Actually, no, we need. Uh, we're gonna keep the space. We're gonna do private um, load damage. Yeah. Yet. No, I can do that. Like, I can't actually. No, wait. Yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's fine. Okay, so we're gonna have damage. We're gonna need a private transform uh, target. We're gonna actually, all of those should be with, uh, yeah, should be like this. So damage target private float lifetime private object pool pool. I think that's everything that we need. 
at least those are the the things that are, that are going to be set up from the um, from the attack. We're going to have some other things that we're going to set up from the project itself, like the speed, for example. Or hmm. Now let's actually check something. Do we have upgrades for increase the power, which would be the damage or the cost? Get some, get a critical chance. Increase the duration of so. Okay, I was wondering if there were any upgrades for uh, in this example for the of the projectile but I guess that doesn't matter we should make so that the projectiles always hit the target so now that I think about it like I might not be actually uh, uh, necessary because I should make it I should make it so that we hit it we hit the enemy always even though it's fast or something So it it should just uh, uh, get closer and closer to to the enemy. Yeah, yeah, we're not gonna have a lifetime here. Okay, but those three for sure we're gonna need. Let's do a week. Um, what am I doing it? I'm doing it in the low phase, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, actually no, not a week. Let's do it on start. So on start, we're gonna... We're gonna hook onto the life cycle service state and listener for the playing. And let's create a method on play. Let's duplicate this. We also need it for pausing. Paused. And private bull is playing. And actually, now that I think about it, I, I don't even need this because I can do so. We're gonna need an update function. Yeah, so we can do it. We can do actually do this directly in the update function because we can do an if. Yeah, the lifecycle service is playing, and if it's not playing, we're just gonna return. Yeah, and then we can do some other stuff uh, in the start. For example, um, actually no. If we stop, no, that should be fine. So uh, if it's not playing, we're not going to do anything. But if it is playing, if it is playing, we somehow have to, um, yeah, go towards the target. So let's, um, Yeah, so transform that, uh, not directly, actually no, no let's not go to, to the position directly, so no, uh, var pos equals vector tree lerp, 
um, from trans transform that position towards tar um, target position. Okay, transform position to target position, and I want to uh, not ninety. Uh, I don't know. Zero point one times um, uh, times time the delta time something like this or actually no this is gonna be insanely small no delta time times five something like this okay so this is gonna be position we're gonna need rotation quaternion dot um, look rotation. Yeah, forward. What's forward? Forward is gonna be. Um, I should save those. Target position. Current position. So the direction is target position minus current position. That position and rotation, pause, rot. Okay, so now theoretically we should have a a projectile that follows the follows the target. Let's make this smaller for now. Let's let's put a one there. And one last thing, public void setup. Target, uh, damage, object pool, pool, damage. Like so. And we're going to have some other things here. Um, Let's see. Um, on enter collision. That's what I'm looking for. On collision enter. Yeah, that's that's the one I'm looking for. Okay. Um, if target um, what was that? Oh, here is child of is, but I'm not. I don't wanna. Uh, uh no. So the target is going to be the enemy. So the collision might happen on another object. So I want to see if. Yeah. Other dot transform that is child of target. If it is, we're going to do. What are we going to do? Um, I'm not sure if this child of is going to look at the the transform itself and then let's look at the document. Just kind of shit. I guess this. Identical to this transform. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we don't have to do that first check. Uh, the function is going to take care of that. 
So if this is it, um, actually now this is no, no, because I can go on the target. Get that, get component, uh, no, component. Enemy health up, take damage, damage. Okay, and um, pull dot release game object. Okay. Now let's go back to the projectile pack. So I actually want it to be false in here. Uh, projectile. I want go get component. Let's see. Um, projectile. Set up. What's the target? It's the closest enemy that transform. I want the damage which is d dot damage, and I want the which is d dot. Uh, projectiles pool. Okay. Actually, no, no. Let's just keep it like this. No. Okay. Let's just do it. Okay. Uh, actually, no. Let's add the. Uh, projectile, let's add the component to the weapon first. So we have no, not the weapon, uh, the projectile itself. Let's add the projectile component. Okay, it has that. Oh my god, I hate that. I hate it. Um, da -da 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 -da. here, high monoscript. Please go away. Thank you. Uh, let's get rid of the space because we don't need it. Awesome. And let's save this. Now, my concern is uh, we're not going to get any messages from the box collider and we might have to move it uh, to the parent, but we'll see. For now, let's just play the game. Let actually let's make a weapon a bit higher. Let's put one there and one there, because I don't know which way they're gonna go. And let's do this. Whoa, 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 whoa! I've seen that. <laughs> I've seen those projectiles. Where are they? Um. Am I not seeing? Oh, this is the one. <laughs> there we go. Here are the projectiles. So apparently they are spawning inside a tower. So um, yeah, we have to move them to the weapons position, and probably we're, we're gonna need some offset at some point. But for now, uh, it should be fine. So. Um, I guess we we can do this in setup. So um, vector three position. Nope. Position and uh, one other thing. Uh, private void. Um, Now just call it destroy destroy. Just move this here. And transform that position. I'm gonna move it somewhere off the screen. So let's go new vector three zero minus one hundred zero. Just move it down below uh, under the tower so we, so it doesn't yeah, we had some flickers um, 
in the past with the enemies where whenever we respawn them, after we use them once, they would flicker on the screen because they were first starting on their position where they were last used. And then we, when we respawn them, we just saw them for a for a split second on the screen. I'm gonna just reset the position uh, right before we, we release them. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, com oh yeah, we have to specify the position, which this would be root dot transform that position. Okay, let's try it again. Um, let's put it here. And let's see what it does. Um, man, I hate this. I should make a dummy component that does this for me. This is quite annoying. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Oh my god, they're going through the tower. Because they're so slow. Yeah. Let's just make them a little bit faster. Like, five times faster. And... Yeah, one thing that we're gonna have to do. Um, yeah, I should add the, the weapon here. One thing that we're gonna have to do is, depending on the speed, we might want to make them go around the tower instead of um, having having them go uh, toward the target uh, without without caring if they pass through the tower. My God! <laughs> oh, are they not reaching the? Let's remove this. Uh, they might not. Um, the collision might not happen, or we might not catch the collision. So uh, let's a log in here. Um, yeah, the dog for sure. Collision with other dot, um, game object dot name. Okay, let's try it again. One. Let's add a weapon here. Let's invoke. Okay, so they're bunching up behind the the enemies, but they're not actually colliding with them. Uh, so one thing that I want to try is to move this uh, box collider up a uh, level. So copy component, let's put it here. Pay component is new. Ah, come on, it didn't retain these uh, those values, but they're easy to. So it should be fine, and this should be a two. Yep. Let's remove this. So now we have a collider, but it's on the on the same level or on the same object as the projectile component. So now we should be getting the messages when we have a collision. And if we don't, uh, that means that we are not actually reaching the enemy. Because that could be a concern because we're using LERP, we might not actually ever reach the enemy, but I don't think that's the case. Okay. Can I do something stupid like just try to go really, really fast?
Have we actually used any? Let me see. Um, okay, so we do have projectiles that are actually inside the enemy. And we don't have any. Okay, so we haven't got any collisions, which is concerning. Actually, do the enemies have a rigid body? They do have a rigid body, so we should have collisions. Okay. Now this is stupid. Um, so theoretically, we should have collisions with uh, with the enemies, but we are not. What's happening here? Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, why am I not getting any messages? Why, why, why? Uh, we can actually let's make a test scene. Um, yeah, let's make a test scene. Uh, let's make a public void setup. Um, Fault or just give it the same position. Target, um, we're gonna set the target in here. Target, target damage 10 and an object pool. Um, I don't know. Um, just put a null in here for the object pool. And let's add a button to this. So let's make a, a scene in which we can test the projectiles. Okay. Um, let's add a, pro, a dummy projectile in here. Let's get to it. Let's reset the position. So we have zero, zero, zero. Uh, reset position. Let's add a whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, we need to have just a something that we can use as a target. Okay, so this is the target. Uh, actually, no, I don't want to save it. I just want to, and I want to. Oh yeah, I have to start again actually. Let's pause this. Okay, so it got there, but we don't have any collisions. So why is that? Why is that? Um so the dummy projectile is a oh no 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 get back there. Uh the dummy is uh, is on layer default. Um, the sphere is in the, on default, so we should have collisions. One reason we might not have collisions is because I'm moving the the object using the transform instead of using a rigid body. But for this case, we don't have a rigid body, so that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, okay. One other thing that I might try is uh, duplicate this. Instead of collision enter, let's do collision stay. Let's see how this behaves. Um, so if we don't have an enter, we shouldn't get any any stays in there. Um, let's get some more music in here. 
what should we do? What should we do? She doors down. Sure, why not? Okay, let's try it again. But I'm quite sure this is not gonna work. Come on. Yep, doesn't work. Why is it that we don't get any? Actually, let's search for this. We might need that uh, that uh, that rigid body without rigid body. It might be that the rigid body sends those. Uh, Yeah, okay, so so in this case, yeah, that's true. I, I don't have any uh, rigid body on anything, so I might have to add one here. Okay, so that's fair. Uh, let's uh, set this as kinematic without gravity. No, I don't want to save. So that's one problem. Let's see this play. What's happening here? Doesn't have a, yeah, doesn't have a transfer. Not a problem. Okay, so we still don't don't have a collision. Yeah, so this is still for the target. Um, let's try to add a rigid body to the projectile. Is kinematic? Yes. Use gravity? No. Actually, uh, is kinematic doesn't mean that. Still nothing. Let's get rid of is kinematic. Let's get rid of this rigid body. Remove component. And the last thing that I'm gonna do is probably try to use a trigger and I will see how that goes. Invoke. Okay, now it's doing something. Um, and now it's now it's doing stuff. Uh, I'm gonna take a short break for, for a few minutes. So I'm gonna be back.
Okay, I'm back. So where were we? Okay, so we've tested this and it works with a rigid body on here, but um, yeah, we have this because uh, our dummy sphere is not a, it doesn't have a component, but that doesn't matter. Let's try to add a rigid body back in here, but without the use gravity and it's gonna be non-kinematic. And let's move this rigid body. Let's try, no, not save. Let's try it again. Um, let's sign the target. New size playing. This doesn't work. Okay, so it looks like we definitely need the... Okay, we need rigid body. Uh, uh, Theoretically, we need a rigid body for for the dummy projectile, which I'm not quite hmm, not sure if I want to add a rigid body to to those to those things. Now I'm wondering if we can if we can uh, um uh, actually no, let's do it here. Collision is not collision, but collider. Uh, I wonder if you can just use a um, just use a trigger and uh, be done with. Because I don't want it to actually collide with the enemies. I just want to know when the when it, when it reaches the enemy. Actually, not uh, start that yet. Uh, let's assign the target first. And that it did. I saw an error. So if it's an error, it's good. Yeah. Okay, so actually, all we have to do is uh, let's get rid of this. Save. And let's go back to our, uh, our scene, uh, which is playground. Uh, don't save this one. And we only need to make this a trigger instead of a collider. Let's try it now. Let's try it in the game. So let's make a weapon. And unfortunately, we don't have a way of showing um, how, might, how much damage an enemy has. But uh, we're gonna check that manually in the editor. Okay, uh, let's see. So start the level. Book. Okay, that kind of worked. Target, get component, enemy health. Collision with sphere. Which it does make sense, but now I'm wondering what is the what's the target? Wonder what's the target? Because in my mind it should be the the entity root or the, the component which has the entity root, so so we could just get enemy health. But I get that. Okay, so let's put a breakpoint here. Let's attach a debugger and let's see what's happening. So, enable for this session. So what's the target? I mean, I know it's a transform, but tell me more. Small enemy. Okay, so that's exactly what I expected expect to see. But now, apparently this... Oh, of course it doesn't work. Uh, get component in children. Yeah, that's a problem. 
obviously it's not the component is not on the root. Um, yeah, now it's gonna work, and we can actually uh, get that uh, that speed a bit. So with five, it should be fine. Okay. Actually, five might be a bit too much, but um, yeah, let's see. Let's try it and see what happens. So create a weapon, select the level and it. There you go, we have, and that's stupid. Okay, it took a bit of damage. That's nice. I mean, one reached it. This took a little bit more damage because it's the first one. And now the question is, why are those not colliding with the sphere? Or not colliding, but... Are they just like really, really... I might just make it so that if you're just like close enough to the to the enemy they they just they just yeah do it like uh, uh damage him because I don't need it to be insanely accurate, you know. I don't need that. I don't need it to be insanely accurate. Let's try to do that. So that would mean in update. But yeah, actually. But now the question is, what does it mean to be close enough? You know, what does it mean to be close enough to the to the enemy? Because I can make it so it. It's close, close enough for this enemy, which is a sphere, but I mean anything. But no, it actually is weird. I don't know why. Why doesn't it reach the? This it should reach the. I mean if. Eventually, it reach the target position or just get closer and closer to it. Is it just because it the, could it be just because the uh, enemy is moving f um, faster than this project and can go towards it? Let's try. Let's try it with ten. Let's see what happens if we kind of double the speed. It's not actually doubling, but yeah, close enough. So let's see. Let's put a weapon here. Start the level. So that worked. So yeah, the problem was that the The enemy was moving faster than the than the bullet could reach him. Mm. Let's try with six, seven point five. That looks like it worked. Uh, let's try to increase the. Let's see. First, increase the range. 
um, which is here. Let's put it at 10. And increase the fire rate and let's put it at, I don't know, 25 projectiles per second. Let's try it like this. Um, okay. Actually, let's put it a, a bit higher because the radius is just uh, insane right now. And let's see, let's start the level. Might actually be able to kill the enemies. Actually not. What's happening? Are you getting messages? Yeah, so this looks like working. Um, I do want to try to actually lower the, the fire rate back and just have this uh, insane radius. Um, and let's get rid of this uh, this log because we know now it works. So let's try it again. Come on, compile. Uh, buy it here. And nice. Okay, so it looks like it's working. So so that's so for for simple projectile attack. I think I think we have everything we need right now. Um, should probably add, let's see, we should probably add stats to those, uh, those values. So we have the damage and the fire rate, so we should probably add stats to them so we can, um, make upgrades for them. So yeah, I might do that. We have to think about this critical chance. We don't have a... We haven't decided on a critical chance there. We'll have to see about that. But uh, I'm gonna add a... Uh... I'm gonna add stats for the damage and the fire rate. Okay, yeah, so we have damage stat and uh, I'm gonna put it here. We're gonna add a indent on this. Let's add space. Let's do the same for the fire rate.
copy damage that from stat. And we also need the reference to manager, I guess. Fire rate it's gonna be d dot fire rate multiplied by d dot upgrade manager get a level for upgrade get multiplier for stat yeah get multiplier for stat uh, and the stat is fire rate stat so that's the fire rate and let's do the damage here as well damage Damage stat. Like so. So now if we have upgrades for fire rate and the damage, we're gonna have uh, um yeah we're gonna have multiplies for those. Um Cool. Let's assign the upgrades manager. And that's I'm not gonna assign because I don't care right now. But they should work just fine. Let's see how we do on time. Hmm, a little bit over the time, but uh, but that's cool. Okay. So yeah, I think I think we've finished with this. At least for now. I mean we have the, the, the base of the of the projectile attack. We don't uh, I don't think we need anything else for this. So we're gonna commit those changes and then move to AOE probably. I changed here. I've added something, right? I've added a. Oh, yeah, damage projectile. Yeah. Oh, yes, I yeah, I changed the, the default weapon. Yeah, it looks fine. On. Cool. So one task done. Um, actually, now what if we should do AOV attack right now? What if we should do it later? Um. Yeah, not sure.
Okay. Um, Yes, I'm not sure if I should do the AOE attack right now. I kind of want to do this one and uh, a, a way of selecting the weapon to spawn. Which, yeah, let's make a let's make a task for that. Um, R buttons. It takes like 10 minutes. So I think these, these are more important because the, those are features that we have and we don't currently expose to the in the game through UI. So I think we should uh, first and then add more more to the game. Okay, so we uh, we need two buttons basically right now. So let's do that. Um, Let's add them. Yeah, let's add them down here. So go next. Go to the next level. We're gonna duplicate this. Um, duplicate. Yes. Let's see. Um, laser. Um, and so it's by fifty. So this would be one seventy. Selected weapon. Oh, I don't have a way of changing the weapon, so let's add that. One down projectile. Oh, um, I have to add the things here. It's correctable. This. And this should be at two twenty to forty to forty, I guess. Um, yeah, two forty. And let's see, let's try it. That should be everything. So now let's uh, actually let, we can look at this. So we, I select the laser and the selected weapon changes. I select the projectile, I get the projectile. So this tab, the laser has a small radius, but if I select the projectile, I don't have enough money. God damn it. Um, where is the economy? Economy manager, add currency. Which currency? I want coins. Give me a lot of coins. Okay. So I have the projectile, right? Yeah. Yeah, and now I can choose the projectile. Now I can go back to the laser and create the laser. There we go. 
that can so now I can change the the type of uh, weapon I can I I, I spawn. Cool. So this one is done. Uh, not here. Okay, the other one, we're gonna do this one, which is gonna be real simple. Um, just add a reference to the to the currency for that. So let's try doing this. So that would be, I'm gonna go to upgrades, which are here, upgrade efficient. And we have this cost. So what we want to do is add a. Actually, let's look somewhere where we where we have the currency. So let's. Um, what do we have currency? In enemy reward, I guess that would be a place where we have some currency, right? Yeah. Currency, currency stat. Yeah, but it's not what I want. Um, I mean that's it, but not quite. Really? Is this the, the only place where I'm using currency? I don't believe that. There we go. Yep, this, this is what I want. Oh, actually, like, like so. So where were we? Upgrade definition here. So I just basically want a horizontal group. Okay, that's fine with me. We're not gonna have a, a suffix label because we're gonna have the currency right next to it. So that's uh, public currency and yeah, like so. So let's let's look at it. Nice. And currently we don't have a currency set up for upgrade coins, so let's do that. Uh, project tower link upgrade upgrade coins currency let's go to upgrades like so then I have the cost and right next to it we have the the currency that will be used but that is like currently we don't we don't we, you can't upgrade the. I mean you don't you don't have a way of uh, using the upgrades in the game. But uh, yeah, this is uh, this is gonna be needed later. Okay. On down. It's. What's happened here? Nice. Okay.
Yeah, so next, uh, maybe we, we're going to do this. Actually, I don't know. I don't know. I, I should have done uh, some more planning beforehand. I thought I've um, I've had some tasks that I that I wanted to do or that are solid, but uh, yeah, it wasn't the case. Because I haven't thought how I want to do this. I, I I know I have to do it. I don't know exactly how how I want to do it. Because, um, yeah, as I said previously, I want to reset the ID, but only when we first create the tower, not when we um, when we create it because um, we loaded something from the from the save file. So I have to differentiate that somehow. Um. So yeah, I'm not sure how I want to do that. Actually, I... yeah, I know. I think I know how I can do that. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do it. I think I know how to do it, or how more like how I want to do it. Yeah, let's try to do this. It's gonna take a bit, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be good. Okay. And after that, yeah, I have an idea on uh, about what we're gonna work on. It's not. It's gonna be for the game, but not in the game project. Um, we're gonna do some changes to the to the AS framework. Uh, some. So we're gonna add a. Uh, An uh, editor window for for save files for uh, deleting save files. Okay, but getting back to this, yeah. So okay, um, let's look at the weapon slot. Let's see how it looks right now. So we have the weapon slot. It has an ID somewhere right here. So we ha it has an ID here. Which I might actually make empty by default. And let's see. Um, where do I use this ID? When the loading is done, which, when is the loading done? When everything is initialized, okay, that makes sense. It does make sense, and it no, it does make sense. Um, let me see. Uh, let's look at the tower builder. So this is an entity component, and how does this actually work? Load phase on a build. Okay, so that's that's how it works. So that that's gonna be fine. So we we build a tower. We actually expand a tower. Okay, then we spawn the tower. And mo we have the modules, tower module data, which is a scriptable object. Um. We need to know something about those uh, tower modules. Because as it is right now, so 
I would like to do is, I guess here, uh, yeah, I guess this is the place. After I spawn all the tower modules, I want to go through all the tower modules and Um, yeah, so I want to go through all the, all the tower modules and find uh, some components or certain components that I'm gonna reset. In in our case, it would be this. Uh, it would be the the weapon slot. And I would just call a method on the on the weapon slot that's gonna do the reset that we want. But uh, I I also wanna uh, specify in the in that method if it's a new module or if it's an old one, like from the save file. So I'm not sure how I can do that. That's the thing. I mean, one hacky way of doing it is, um, let's see, um, I can look at the life cycle. Yeah, yeah, that's one, one hacky. No, actually, no, it doesn't work because when we create a tower the first time, if we don't have a file, um, yeah, so no, it doesn't actually work. Yeah, not sure how I wanna do this, but let's try to to do the others first. Um, so I would like to implement an in, an interface here, which I'm not sure how I should call it. Um, I think it's gonna be part of the tower module. So let's go there. Let's actually clean up a bit here. Tower module. I think it's gonna be here. It's gonna be something like I. Module reset. Or not reset, but set up. And it's not class, it's an interface. It's gonna have a public void. Our module setup. We'll new, uh, new module piece. It's going to be something like this. And we would implement this on the weapon slot. And if it's a new module piece, we're going to reset the, the ID. So that, that would be the idea. Uh, one second, I have to, to take a poll.
I'm back. Sorry for that. Um. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna have this interface with this method, and yeah, I don't know if the, if this is a the a good name for it, but uh, yeah, we're gonna receive a bool, which is gonna tell if this module is a new one or is a a module that. A module that already is, um, hmm. actually I wonder if we should um, Ah, got it. Um, well, I wonder if we should send this bull, um, or if it if we should just uh, call this method uh, when we create new 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 tower pieces. Yeah, not sure. But yeah, we we have to we have to figure out how we can So here it would be the, the place where we would do it. <clears throat> so here generate module size. If we have modules, get the next uh, what is this? Start module, okay. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, so if we have anything actually this is this is what Yeah. So here, by checking this, we know if um, there are modules that are loaded from the save file. Um, so we might just pass this information to the spawn tower. Well, it's a bit weird because the, the spawn tower method doesn't. How how should I call this? Let's try to give a name to this variable that I'm gonna put here. So it's gonna be an int. Um. Found a. I mean, something like that. Uh, not const uh, var. Which is actually not correct. Because when we expand, oh uh, no, let's rename this count of. Known known modules, something like so.
Come on, what's this result? What is this? What does it? It returns a power module. I saving uh, the so what would that be? Tower data. So those are the modules, but I'm not saving any references to the. The modules uh, game object. So I might want to do that actually. List of game object. Um, modules game object. So now in the builder. Or not even in the builder. I guess it would be here. Would be the results. So it would be something like, um, let's see. Oh, I can do. I can do it here. And I don't need to pass that uh, count of known modules because I know them. I know which ones are the new ones that I'm gonna create. Actually, yes and no. I don't. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. I no. I still need that. I still need that. Okay, so. I'm gonna do. Uh, Tower data dot just go dot add range and I'm gonna add the result and why doesn't it work? Because they're tower modules, uh yeah, make them tower modules for sure, why not? Module instances. So those are the instances. And now what I want to do is for each uh, module instance, get components in children. Uh, I our module setup uh, not, um, yeah let's do for each our module setup and it needs a bool, which I don't have because I'm doing a for each here. Let's do a four because I need the index. Oh, God damn it. I want the index. And what was this? New module piece. Um, if i is more or equal to the count of known things. Okay. Let's add a, uh, nope, not console log. Um,
come on, compile. Thank you. Let's create the console. Let's inspect this. Um, started. So that's good. Late. And I hate those. Um, pom pom. I should have um, wrote this. There we go. So it's true for every new piece. Cool. Which means that we have new IDs for those weapon slots, and we do. That's awesome. Oh, uh, I know, actually, yeah. Uh, and what we want to do is we would like to expand the tower by, let's say, five modules. One, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What? Oh yeah. So th th those are not the amounts of. Uh, there's another amount of um, modules that we have, but the amount of uh, weapon slots. So yeah, there could be more of them. But what's important is that we have instances where 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 that that uh, one, two, three, four, five. So there are there were five uh, messages before, and I guess those same five, yeah, those same five um, weapon slots are being called with false right now, and the others with true. So that means that uh, we've retained the the ID. Which is exactly what we wanted. Let's remove this. I did that in uh, debug mode. It's empty. Yeah. Okay. I want to add a hmm. yeah. Let's add a log here. So from empty to this, and now let's try it. Uh, let's try expanding the tower. And yeah, we are still 
uh, from empty to to an ID. So that means that we haven't reset any any object pools that we previously created. Yeah, so that's nice. Actually, I'm gonna um, change that name. New module. Um, Not sure exactly what I I think it's gonna, it wants to change the the name here but I was not sure I'm gonna do it manually new module is module go or change it god damn it yeah let me change it here okay okay so now we have a generic way of doing inside the um, tower module so whenever it Pond, um, we can do stuff to it. In this case, we be an ID to a weapon slot. One thing that doesn't work right now is, unfortunately, our weapon slots. Uh, I'll have to, and I can make them or make that right now. Um, they're simple mono behaviors, so this ID is not. Um, oh, I don't think I, I can do that. Um, those IDs are not retained. Uh, no, no, I can't me that. Uh, those IDs are not uh, retained in the save file. So if we spawn um, top module again, we're not gonna have the ID. Actually, that's a problem. I'm not sure. Wait a second. I don't think we can do this. So I was thinking just making this weapon slot an entity, and then we just save it in the save file. It would be automatic. But that actually doesn't work because we're not. Oh shit. Um, the tower pieces are spawned sometime after we load stuff from the file, so. Um, so the data would not be assigned to, to this entity, to the weapons. So even though we, we we even though we have data for the for the weapons, we wouldn't be able to to assign it because it's not yet in the scene. It's not yet spawned. So I think we need another way of doing it, and I'm not sure how. Not sure how. But yeah, this this is could be this could be something that we do at a later date. So it's not uh... yeah, the important thing that I wanted to do was this the having this ID and having this generic way of knowing uh when something changed in the or not something changed, but when when we spawn a module and um, doing stuff at that time. Yeah, I think I'm going to I'm going to leave it like this for now. I'm going to make a task for this because I have to do something um for this, but I'm not sure how. I'm probably going to save something in the tower data. So, cuz right now we're seeing the modules, but I might have to do uh, I might have to save some things in here. Yeah. Which is not that complicated, but uh, yeah, I may have to save some things in here, like uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I have to. See. 
but uh, but it can be done. That's that's not a problem. Hmm. Okay. Um. Yeah, so let's let's stop the the task uh, this task for here, uh, right here for now. Um, and we're gonna continue with the weapon slot some other time. Cause right now we don't we don't really care about uh, saving the game, but uh, we just have to we want to keep it in the in the back of our mind. We're gonna need to do that at some point. So. Um, it's good to just think about it and plan some things, even though you're not going to do them uh, right away. Okay, let's publish this. Uh, have I removed that? Yeah, so no, no log there. Cool. Yeah, so there 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 are those two tasks that 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 I've left over. So so I I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna do AOA right now. I I think I have to think about uh, think more about this because the flamethrower would be simple to do because it's just a um um what do you call it? Uh, the flamethrower is just a a collider that I don't know follows the enemy or in this case we actually want the uh, the flamethrower to be stationary and just point at the so 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 the weapon would be next to the um next to a path on the tower and we want the the flamethrower to point the to the closest path or the the closest point of a path and just be stationary uh, that part we have, I've done it a couple of streams ago, but um, yeah, there are some other things that I have to think about, and so I'm not going to do this right now. And this other task I just, I just realized that I can't actually do because uh, we would need some kind of UI for each individual weapon. This won't be a global... Um, this won't be a global uh, setting. You 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 will be able to set uh, this. Uh, you'll be able to set this thing on each individual weapon. So yeah, we we will first have to do some uh, things in the editor with, where you would be able to click on the weapon and uh, I don't know uh, some menu would show up, and the, that that's gonna be the place where you be able to also upgrade the weapon. But yeah, uh, that's gonna require us some more work. So, and we, yeah, we haven't done anything uh, in that direction for uh, right now. So yeah, this is gonna go to to the backlog for sure for uh, for a while. And I don't think there's anything else left in in the backlog uh, that I've planned. This is this is a bug that I put uh, quite a while ago, and I don't think it's even a um, problem. And this one is just a research task that I'm gonna um, do in my in my spare time sometime. But yeah, it's, I haven't planned for anything else. So, and actually, even what's the next step? Um, what? Yeah, what's the next thing that I should do for the game? I probably should do something about the the levels, and I should probably make them start. Uh, Automatically, because I'm getting tired of going to the level manager and uh, invoking this uh, setup function myself. I'd like to have a button on screen for uh, starting the the game or something, starting the level after you place all your weapons. So we might do that. 
uh, we could start working on powers, but I haven't um, I haven't expanded this, uh, so, so I have to think about how I want to do powers. So powers are basically, yeah, are different types of attacks that you can use um, by yourself. So, so you can click on enemies in the game and you just like zap them with, uh, yeah, with a laser or something. And you can do a different, uh, um, yeah, dif you can apply different effects to the enemies, either damage them or slow them. Um, yeah, probably that's gonna be the the part that we're gonna work on. So, so the the power is gonna be a, the power is gonna be a big one, and then the yeah, start starting the being able to start a game from within the game, not from the editor as it is right now. But yeah, I, I'm not sure how I want to do that. There's, there's probably going to be a layer above the... So we have... Uh, what do we have? So we have levels. And a level is defined by a list of waves. And we're probably going to have another level or another thing above a level, which is going to define a list of levels we're gonna have in the game, something like that. Sure how that's gonna play out. Or how that's gonna work out, but uh, yeah, something along those lines. So yeah, yeah. But for now, yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna stop here, and uh, we're gonna continue next week, I guess. And I'm gonna do some more uh, some more planning and uh, uh, think about more uh, about more things. Uh, in the game and how how I want to do them. Actually, we can say that we've done the projectile attack component. Nice. And there's no other thing that is put in here. Yeah, that's the only thing. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to stop the stream here and uh, we're going to continue working on the game uh, next Saturday. So thanks for being here and see you next time. Bye bye.